Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to 2024. Uh, I hope you had a great time over the Christmas season, a uh, great uh, time celebrating whatever you were doing in terms of whether you were with family or good friends. And uh, now we are into 2024. How funny does that seem, hey? Stepping from one year into the next. At the start of every new year, you will know if you've been around Restore for a little while, um, we use January really to, um, to outline vision and what we feel like God is speaking for a new year to us. Um, there's a famous verse in Proverbs and it says, uh, without vision the people perish. And uh, I like the literal translation of that, which is without vision, people are unrestrained. And I think that is so true in life that we end up wondering all around the place if we haven't got some fixed parameters to guide us, to focus, focus us and to show us the way ahead. And I think in terms of our relationship with God and in terms of us as a church, uh, one of the important things that we do regularly is just find some time and some space to say, God, what are you speaking to us in this season? What are you pointing out in terms of the direction we should be? heading in and, and then double checking that we're aligning with that direction because it keeps us on course and means we'll be fruitful and end up doing the things that God has called us to. The start of the new year, I guess lots of us do that on lots of different ways. New year resolutions are all based on the fact that I want this year to be better than next year and if I uh, change this about my life then things will be better. It's all part of that process of re-evaluating and I think that is healthy and I think it's good. It is an opportunity for us to uh, reflect on our life and think about what we do want to change or prioritise or push into in the next season. So uh, through January and a little bit into February, we're going to be focusing really on the word that we feel that God has given to us as Restore, a family of churches, uh, for 2024. And the background to this word is really interesting because one of the things we do in our Loughton congregation is we do a project uh, called TLG, actually trans it stands for Transforming Lives for Good. And uh, the whole project is a uh, mentoring project for primary uh, school uh, children. And, and it's primarily for children that are struggling in primary school. And uh, the school identified that they would benefit from some mentoring. And then the uh, congregation provides some people who go into the school every week and they spend an hour uh, doing some mentoring uh, with a the child. There's a whole mentoring program. You get training, resources, all of those sort of things. So it's one of the ways we can invest in our local community. And we've got some people who go into Alderton School in, in Loughton and do that regularly. And uh, we uh, were asked by the organisation TLG if we would take one of their uh, preachers to come and speak a little bit more about their work. And so uh, last uh, October uh, we got a guy uh, who is, is new to TLG as an organisation in the UK. He's actually a South African guy. Uh, but we got him to come on a Sunday morning in Loughton Congregation and uh, preach to us. Uh, when I spoke to him uh, the week before I realised that he had a uh, a, a, a not insignificant prophetic ministry and so I encouraged him not just to speak about the work of TLG but also if he had anything prophetic uh, for us then to give that and uh, what happened really is he didn't speak that much about TLG at all, but he just got hold of something from God and he spoke it out and then he had a number of prophetic words for uh, different individuals uh, in the congregation and it ended up being a really significant time. But the word that he had was a word that, uh, that uh, we felt God was uh, speaking over us as Restore as we head into 2024. And he actually said it, he felt like it was a word for 2024. Um, and that word comes from uh, the book of Ezekiel in the Old Testament. Uh, it's a famous bit of scripture uh, uh, that you'll probably recognise when I read it in a minute. Uh, but it's from Ezekiel and it's chapter 37 and it's verses 1 to 14 which talk about the valley of the dry bones. So uh, I'm just going to read that and then I'm going to draw out some of the things that, uh, that the guy brought in terms of the, uh, the prophetic word and some of the things that we feel from that. The Lord is speaking to us as we head into uh, 2024. So Ezekiel 37 verse uh, 1. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the bones, and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. 
I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath entered them. They came to life and stood upon their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I'm going to open up your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open up your graves and bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. It's a great um, passage of scripture, isn't it? Uh, Probably many of us will know it. Uh, There's a number of songs written about it. There's a great song by Elevation Worship written the last couple of years uh, called Rattle, uh, which is all about the bones coming together and God breathing afresh by his spirit. There's uh, really old songs, aren't they? Like, like them bones, them bones, them dry bones, all about the uh, uh, story. But it's, it's, a, it's a prophetic story about God moving afresh in his people. And it helps in terms of understanding the story, just to understand a little bit of the background in terms of the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel and the context into which it's written so we can really understand its significance and then apply it into our context today for what God is speaking to us as restore. And uh, the name Ezekiel means God will strengthen and Ezekiel was a prophetic voice who was prophesying about God coming and strengthening his people again. And Ezekiel came uh, late on in the history of of Israel, uh, before the time of Jesus. Um, And it was a time that Israel was doing really badly. And so early on in the book of Ezekiel, uh, one of the things that Ezekiel prophesies is he prophesies a moment at the end of uh, chapter 11 where the glory of God, which is resting on the temple of God in Jerusalem, which is what marks out God's uh, people, uh, Israel, from every other nation on the earth, he sees a moment where God's glory lifts from the temple and then disappears from the land. And what he's prophesying in that is he's prophesying that because Israel have fallen so far away from where God wants them to be, because they've become such a godless nation, because they've ended up just living like all the other nations around, actually the presence of God has left them. And the early part of Ezekiel, he prophesies about the judgment that is falling on them because they're being disobedient to God, because they're not living God's ways, because they've lost that sense of hosting the presence of God. And so Uh, chapters 12 to 24 uh, prophesy God's judgment against Israel and then uh, from 25 to 33 it's God's judgment on the nations around Israel and he also speaks about the fact that Israel is going to be invaded by the Babylonians and taken off into exile which is actually what happened uh, to the nation of Israel and Babylon you'll know uh, maybe the roots of, of the nation Babylon go back to Genesis chapter 11 the Tower of Babel and the Tower of Babel represented a time that people rebelled against God and agreed together in rebellion against God. And so when they get carried away, God's people, into Babylon, it's a sign that they've fallen so far away, they're like all the other nations of the world. They're now uh, rebellious in terms of the way they've been living and coming under the judgment of God as opposed to be the nation that is carrying hope and is able to bring restoration to the world. So in lots of ways, the early part of Ezekiel is uh, is quite bleak and quite dark and uh, quite discouraging. But the wonderful thing about God and the wonderful thing about Jesus is even in the darkest hour, even in the toughest moments, God is there and he's waiting to break in with new hope. 
And that's exactly what we see in the book of, of uh, Ezekiel. And I guess where Ezekiel then really does fulfill his name in terms of speaking about how God's going to come and strengthen for a new season. And in the second half of the book, starting Ezekiel 44, uh, 34, we get the hope of restoration for God's people, or in many ways, resurrection for God's people, which is where we uh, uh, pick up in Ezekiel 37. But it starts off in Ezekiel 34, and Ezekiel prophesies of a day that there will be a new Messiah, that Jesus will come and he will be the one who will lead God's people back into godly ways. He actually talks about Jesus coming as as a good shepherd, which is the same language that Jesus uses in John chapter 10, but uh, as a shepherd who carries the, the true heart of God and leads in a true godly way. And then it goes on in Ezekiel uh, chapter 36. He talks about that he will take away the heart of stone, which represents a a heart that's unreceptive to God, a heart that's resistant, a heart that's got hardened because it hasn't processed the stuff uh, uh, of life, and a heart that is not able to hear the word of God. And he talks in Ezekiel 36 about, I will take away your heart of stone and I'll restore to you a heart of flesh. And he talks again about God's people becoming receptive once more to God's words sensitive to what God's uh, saying and, uh, and therefore uh, obedient to uh, the word of God and uh, following through with those things that God has called to them. And then we get the picture of Ezekiel 37, which is a picture of God's people being brought back to life again. And there's a process that, uh, that we find in Ezekiel 37. We're going to go through uh, the whole chapter in detail over the next uh, few weeks. Uh, so we're going to walk through that process step by step step. But the prophetic word that was given to us as a church was this. Um, The the guy spoke and he said that uh, over the last few years he sensed, and he didn't know any of this, so I had a phone call with him to kind of get to know him a little bit and to explain a bit of the context in Loughton, but I didn't give him any of the detail about us and the history of the life of Restore. And, uh, And he came and he said the thing that he felt was he felt that over the last few years we'd been through a process of restructuring, and for him it was like the bones in Ezekiel 37, and uh, we see at the start of the story in Ezekiel 37 that the bones are scattered, they're all over the place, and uh, they're not connected together, and there's not a body that's been formed, and and we know that when Paul talks about the church in the New Testament, he talks about as being a body, and uh, Israel was meant to be a body, they were meant to be uh, the living presence of God, and yet the body had been broken and separated and scattered and had dried up, and so Ezekiel comes and these bones are all over the place, and uh, the first thing that he has to do is he has to prophesy for a coming together of the bones. And the coming together of the bones, you know, the bone, the human skeleton is what gives form to our body. It's what gives structure to our body. And the guy uh, prophesied over the fact, about the fact that over the last few years, we'd done a realignment within Restore, and we'd shifted some of the bones around to create a new structure, which is exactly what we did. If you remember a few years ago, when uh, COVID hit, we all had to do life differently. So uh, it was a massive moment in many ways of restructuring life uh, simply because we couldn't meet in the way that we used to meet. But it was really interesting timing for us in leadership in Restore because over the previous few years we'd just been reflecting on what was happening across Restore and uh, re-evaluating, I guess, taking stock of what was happening. And in lots of ways we looked like we were doing really well. So our congregations on the whole were healthy, on the whole, they were growing as well. And so to the um, external uh, onlooker, it looked like we were doing really well. And often um, one of the ways that we measure success is by counting numbers. And, uh, and I guess we do it in terms of, the, certainly in terms of the world, in terms of the business world. But a really interesting question is, what does success look like in the kingdom of God? And I'm not sure that success in the kingdom of God always looks like numbers in the same way it does in the world. And uh, I think success in the kingdom of God looks more like, are we living a life that looks like Jesus? Are we caring for the vulnerable and the oppressed? Um, Are we a a community that brings healing and reconciliation? And those things are a lot harder to measure. But I think in lots of ways, if 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 we're going to be really Jesus-centered and Jesus-focused, they're the kind of things that we need to uh, focus on and uh, elevate and celebrate and maybe measure, as opposed to how many people have we got tuning in on a Sunday morning or uh, actually physically in the room? Because it's one thing to have a group of people 
people physically in the room and, uh, and maybe enjoying the experience. It's a totally other thing to have a group of people going away and then doing the business of letting Jesus shape and reshape and reform their lives. And what we felt is, although we'd been growing numerically and looked good on lots of levels, um, actually we'd felt like the depth of our relationship to one another um, had, had uh, really dropped and we had a lot of people coming along that we kind of recognised their face but we wouldn't really know them and we certainly weren't sharing life with them and it also felt that we weren't sure that we were getting a lot of people going deep in their relationship with Jesus obviously if you're watching this you're one of the good people who were doing that so we celebrate you um, but we had people that we weren't sure how deep they were actually going in terms of their discipleship or in terms of their lifestyle change of following Jesus and even more worrying we had very few people coming to know Jesus. And if the uh, great commandment that Jesus gave us at the end, the great commission at the end of his time on earth, was to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, and we were putting lots of energy into community works and stuff, and into making Sunday church work happen, but we are seeing very little ordinary people come to know Jesus. And so we were, had been seeking God over that, and when the whole COVID experience happened, we thought if ever there was an opportunity to reshape and restructure and to uh, realign some of the bones in the structure, now would be it. And so you'll know if you were part of the journey. Uh, we were praying and we felt like God said we should uh, regather in smaller groups and we should focus on, on creating genuine shared life genuine, not just Sunday church, but general uh, week in, week out, uh, house church, uh, small group focused, where we genuinely, genuinely share life with one another. And at the same time, we should encourage one another to go deeper in our relationship with Jesus, but also to be good news to our community or our workplace or our neighbours or our friendship network. And so we went into, um, we went into uh, lockdown, I think, with, uh, with two congregations. We came out with five expressions of church, which was quite a bold move to, to, to make, particularly when a lot of people were already tired and weary and had had a lot of things change. Um, and so that was hard work to go through and do. And I appreciate that. And I appreciate for many of us, it cost us on many levels. Many of you, it costs you on many levels. But we did it simply because we felt like the Lord was saying to, uh, to see the fruit that we'd been longing for and praying for, we needed to do life differently. And uh, when this guy came and gave the prophetic word, he really said that uh, the bones coming together was like that new forming. And he talked about the fact that, uh, that he felt like it had been a painful process. And he felt there was still some grief around from the pain of the readjustments we had to do. And I've been reflecting on that over the last couple of months um, as I've been praying over this word. Because um, I've felt over the last few years like there has been a huge amount of grief that we've had to process. And some of that has been the impact of COVID and then wars around the world and economic crises and all of that stuff. Which has made life tough for us and has meant that we've had to engage with lots of losses. But also over COVID... We said this many times, but you know the stats are that, that something like a, about a third of churches never regathered, or, or the people within them never returned, and that's a huge grief and a huge loss. And because we reshaped, there was a grief and a loss from people that we were used to seeing every week that we were no longer seeing in that in that uh, way. And uh, he just talked about the fact that that had uh, been a painful process, and many of us had had pain that we'd had to deal with uh, to do with that. And I would encourage you if you are still carrying grief from the last few years if you want 2024 to be a year where you start to see fruitfulness and joy restored to your life take some time to process your grief I'm going to talk about this a little bit next week because it's the first it's one of the first things that Ezekiel has to do in in this uh, uh, story this vision of the dry bones uh, uh, beginning to become an army so we'll look a little bit at that next week. But if you're carrying grief as you're stepping into 2024, can I really encourage you to take some time to process it in the presence of God? Bring your sadnesses, bring the things that have hurt you, bring them into the presence of God and ask God to heal you and wash you of that and start the process of beginning new life. 
Um, the second thing he said, though, was, was if, to, if the first stage was uh, the bones coming together in a new shape and a new stru structure, he said the second thing that happens in this passage is the bones then start to get covered in flesh, and we get the muscles, and we get the tendons, and we get the skin that then starts to cover the, the bones because there's a resurrected body that is in the process of being made. And uh, he, he just talked about the fact that over the last year or two, as we've uh, begun the process of uh, regular church again, of finding our feet in our new expressions, in our new locations with an updated, refreshed vision, then it's like um, we started to put muscle on and it started, we've, we started to uh, see the life come back into the body. And for me, that would be very much my experience of uh, 2023. I think if you, if you replay uh, the vision uh, talk from a year ago, uh, I, I think one of the things that I said is, is in 2022, we just got used to being church again and being back in the room and back to doing some of the things that we used to do. In 2023, our goal was to become a healthy church, was uh, to uh, get the body healthy again. And I think by God's grace, uh, we've seen that happen as well. I think we've had some really lovely times worshipping in the presence of God together. I think we've seen the Holy Spirit do some great stuff. And it feels for, to me as someone who regularly stands in front of the different expressions of Restore and speaks to people. It's like people have come back to life again. It's like we've seen the muscle come back on the body and the flesh start to come together again. And I'm really grateful for that. I'm really grateful that we come to the end of uh, 2023 more healthily than, than we started. And, uh, and therefore, that gives me anticipation for 2024. So the guy said, um, first part of the vision was the bones coming together, which was a sign, a picture of the restructuring that's happened across Restore. The second thing was uh, uh, just the... Uh, flesh coming onto the bones again as we've uh, found our feet again and a new rhythm in a new day, in a new season with a refreshed vision as we step forward. But then the guy said, he said, 2024 is going to be a year of activation. 2024 is going to be a year of activation. And he spoke particularly from verse 9 when uh, God speaks to Ezekiel and he says, prophesy to the breath prophesy, son of man, say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come, breathe from the four winds, breathe into those slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood on their feet, a vast army. And the guy uh, who was prophesying said that in 2024, um, what we are going to experience as Restore is we're going to experience the breath of God breathing over us again. And I've said it a number of times, but in Hebrew, um, the Bible, uh, the language in which the Old Testament is written, uh, the word for breath is the same as the word for wind, which is the same as the word for spirit. And so when uh, Ezekiel is told to prophesy breath. What he's saying is prophesy the Spirit of God. Prophesy that God breathes from heaven on you. Prophesy that God's Spirit falls on you. And what this guy said is in 2024, what the Lord is wanting to do across Restore is release a fresh move of his spirit and there's going to be a supernatural activation that brings the body fully to life and if you track your uh, kind of biblical references through and the best way of understanding the bible i think is to put it all together and see how themes uh, kind of tie together through the whole how threads come together through the whole bible but uh, the start of the creation story when god makes the first man he takes the dust from the earth and he forms it into a physical shape which is so reminiscent of ezekiel 37, the bones coming together and then the muscles and the tendons and the skin coming on it. But then in the Genesis account of it, uh, God then breathes the breath of life and man becomes a living being. And in Ezekiel 39, uh, verses, uh, 37, verses 9 and 10, God breathes, or Ezekiel is said, is called to prophesy that God breathes and that life will emerge. And uh, the guy's prophetic word was that in 2024, we would have a sense of a supernatural spirit activation that would take us into starting to see some of the promises and the dreams and the things that we've been prayed for uh, come to fruition. So we really sense that for 2024, there's a quickening in God's spirit, that God wants to breathe across us in a fresh way, and that we're going to see God start to uh, bring us into the answers to some of our prayers and our dreams and our hoping and our longing. 
And so for us as uh, members of Restore in, in 2024, what does that mean? Well, number one, I think it means we need to step into 2024 with a sense of anticipation in our hearts. You know, the last few years feel like they've been really tough. Uh, Jody Collins was speaking in, in Loughton at the start of December and was talking about Christmas, kind of opening up our Christmas story. And uh, one of the things she said early on was, who's excited about Christmas this year? And nobody was. And it just felt like everyone has been struggling just to hold it together. And in a year of high energy prices and, uh, and uh, uh, economic hardship, um, actually people were just trying to get their way through Christmas as opposed to be, hey, isn't this exciting? And I think that is a sign of all that we've had to face over the last few years, one thing after another, after another, after another, after another. If you're not careful, that can start to blunt your faith which is the reason why we need to deal with our losses stepping into 2024. And as I said, I'll talk some more about it next uh, week, um, but you can start going in, in terms of uh, preparation for it. You can start dealing with your losses this week and you'll be ready, you'll be well on track for next week. Um, but I feel like at the start of 2024, God wants to say, even though your experience has been tough, even though there's been a lot of things that could have discouraged you, I want to give you a spark of hope that something is going to change this year. And I think that's the beginning of the year of activation. Just letting hope drop afresh into our minds, our hearts, our spirits, and start to land and take. You know, Jesus said, for, from faith, just a small size of a mustard seed, a faith that small, small, and mustard seed is one of the smallest seeds you could get. Uh, I could put one on my hand and ha show it in front of the camera, but you wouldn't be able to see it. Uh, a faith as, a, a, as small as a mustard seed is able to move mountains. It's able to be planted over a situation, prayed over, and become a massive tree that then uh, attracts all the birds of the air. And that, again, is an Old Testament uh, picture from Ezekiel, actually, of the nations coming into the tree that, that uh, Israel was meant to be. But what Jesus is saying is massive things come from, can, can come from a tidy seed of faith. Now, I felt at the start of 2024, God's wanting just to implant again a fresh sense of faith, of God is with us. God is on the move. This year, we're going to see God break out in some amazing, amazing ways. Maybe you just want to take a moment and let faith catch in your heart and in your spirit right now. This is going to be a year of activation. It's going to be a year of transformation because God has promised it. One of the things we'll look at over the coming weeks, but it didn't look to Ezekiel like there was going to be an army. But as he prophesied it, as he let a, a, a seed of faith catch in his heart, so it began the process of God bringing transformation. Let's start by letting that seed of faith just drop and engage afresh in our hearts. Second thing that we need to do is we need to welcome and intentionally make space for God's spirit to come. One of the things you'll find in uh, 2024 in terms of our plan for the year is that this year we really want to push out in prayer and we want to push out in our life in the spirit together because that is prophesying the breath to come. That's making space for the breath to come. And so starting this week, we're kicking off with our week of prayer and fasting. And I would really, really encourage you to get involved in that. Um, you know, um, Jesus talked about the fact that, that uh, there's a war that goes on within us between our flesh, which uh, is, is the me-focused, my, 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 consume, 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 pardon me, and the Spirit of God, which is the serving God, the surrendering to God, the doing what God says. And he says, uh, he, he says that the flesh is weak, um, and so we need, he says that, he doesn't actually, he, um, I'm losing all the all my references now in that. But he talks about the battle between the two. He says the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. That's what he says. I've remembered it now. Um, but what he says is, is often God's spirit wants to help us do the things that God's called us to, but then our flesh undermines it. And when we fast, what we do is we lay down something that represents the power of the flesh in our lives so we can better lean into God's spirit. So if we're going to be people who this year experience the breath of God overtake us, let us be people who this year 
lay down things that represent the flesh so we can step into the spirit. And if you've read our emails and things, you'll know that one of the things I've been encouraging people to do is to say in 2024 is the one thing that represents the power of the flesh in my life that I could lay down for the whole year. I know we're already on the 7th of January, so uh, maybe it's a bit late for some of you. But you know what? Even from today is the one thing that if you laid it down would be a sign to God and be a, a potential breakthrough moment for you to go deeper in the spirit of God. Maybe it's tea or coffee. I was at a, a, a conference in the autumn. And the guy was talking and saying, you Brits, you love your tea and coffee. What about surrendering that for Jesus? And God really spoke to me and said, why don't you lay down coffee for me in 2024? And I love coffee. But you know what? I love Jesus more. And I want to give more place to the spirit of God in my life this year than anything else. So I've laid down coffee for 2024. Um, for some of you, it might be alcohol. Or it might be uh, the games that you play. Computer games, internet games might be social media, might be some of the things you watch on TV, might be some of the things you read. It might be a habit or something that you um, regularly spend money on. It might be chocolate, might be shopping for shoes. I, I don't know what it is for you, but I think it would be really great if at the start of 2024, we took a stand as God's people and said, we're not going to be governed by the flesh this year. We're going to push into the spirit. And uh, whatever you do for 2024, I think it'd be great for us to, to do something, as I say, for the whole year. But this week, we have an opportunity to lay something down. We're starting uh, uh, tomorrow, Monday, through to uh, Friday. And it's a time of prayer and fasting. What could you give up? even for one day or two days or half a day or something that's just a sign that you do not want the flesh to rule in your life anymore. You want to go deeper in the Spirit of God. And to ensure we go deeper in the Spirit of God, we've got lots of moments that we can gather this week. So we've got Zoom prayer meetings happening at 6 o'clock, 6 till 7 a.m. every morning, Monday to Friday, that you can come online and join with. It's been fantastic to see the number of people who have got up early and connected to that. You don't have to put your camera on, so don't worry about uh, getting dressed and all of those things. Um, uh, what's more important is we just gather together and we engage and we start the day in prayer. Tuesday evening, we're going to be gathering at uh, Albany Church in Enfield to have a worship evening at 7.30 in the evening. And on Friday evening, we're going to be gathering at 7.30 at Restore Woodford. What we're going to do on Friday evening, though, is push the boat out a little bit more in faith and expectancy and surrender. And we're going to pray right through the night from 7.30 in the evening till 6 in the morning. And then we're going to finish with breakfast. The root of breakfast is break fast. So we're going to break our week of fasting at six o'clock on Saturday morning. But we're going to pray through the night, uh, 7.30 from Friday evening till six o'clock Saturday morning. We've got a plan for how we're going to do it and structure it. You can come for any of it, all of it, bits of it. doesn't matter. Uh, it's an opportunity to, to uh, join in with it. Um, we're also going to have a Zoom option, so you, you'll be able to, to join it on Zoom as well and be part of that. Uh, again, just sacrificing time to say, God, we're serious. We want to get hold of you in 2024. We're serious that this is going to be a year of activation and we're asking you for the breath, for the wind of your spirit to blow across our lives and to blow across the life of Restore. Um, uh, Monday evenings and uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays, there's going to be a 9 till 10 o'clock Zoom in the evening as well. I know not everyone finds early mornings easy or it's possible to. Some people are better uh, 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 later on uh, in the evening. And so we've got 9 to 10 uh, Zooms happening on Monday, Wednesday and Thursday because they're, they're the days that there aren't the physical gatherings. Um, so there's lots of opportunity this week to push into the Spirit of God. And then what we're going to do is every first Wednesday of each month, so the first first Wednesday of each month, starting in February, the first Wednesday of each month, we're going to make that a day of prayer and fasting across Restore. And we're going to pray for the Spirit of God, for the breath of God to come again across us. And in the evenings from 7.30, we're going to gather in different locations and we're going to worship together, we're going to pray together, and we're going to invite the Spirit of God to come. 2024 is a year of activation. We need to start it by surrendering our souls to God, presenting our souls to God, engaging with God, and inviting his spirit to come. We've got another couple of things planned in uh, 2024 that are just worth noting in your diary. Um, we've got two, all 
four restore uh, weekends happening, or uh, Saturdays happening at least. Um, one is uh, Saturday the 23rd of March. Um, it, it, we had the first one uh, last autumn with Stuart Lee, who's had a great time together. Uh, Saturday the 23rd of March, we've got a guy, a great guy, um, called Bjorn Lutger, who uh, leads an organisation, he's part of an organisation called Dynamic Church Planting International. Um, he's a European lead of them, and he does great work um, on discipleship and, uh, and training and developing leaders. And he and his wife are coming for the day and going to input us. There'll be an opportunity to, uh, for uh, worship, for input, and for ministry with uh, Bjorn. We're really excited about him coming. I said to Tobias Singala, if, you could get, if we could get one person in 2024 to come to input the life of Restore, who would you get? And he said, I'd get Bjorn to come. And so we con- reached out to him and, uh, and he said yes. So that's uh, really great, uh, 23rd of March. Second thing we're going to do is the uh, 28th of September, uh, 2024, uh, Restore will be 40 years old. And so we're going to uh, use that uh, weekend as like a birthday celebration. We're inviting people from the history of Restore to come and give testimony. And uh, there'll be lots of opportunity to celebrate all that God has done over the last 40 years, as well as some time to prophesy and pray into the next season in the life of Restore. And uh, we've also been encouraging people to think about going to Wildfires Camp this uh, summer. That's from the 23rd to the 26th of August. Be a great thing. Chris and I uh, looking in uh, to be a part of that. But it'd be a great thing if people from across um, Restore could come to that. Um, Wildfire's uh, major part of it is the 24-7 prayer movement that Pete Gregg leads. Be a great time for us again to be together, but together in the presence of God. So that's some of the things we've got happening in 2024. But I simply want to encourage you at the start of 2024, let's take hold of this passage of Ezekiel 37. Let's read it regularly. Let's ask God to speak to to us uh, through it. And let's start prophesying and speaking out, and particularly that word about the breath of God coming. Let's start prophesying and uh, speaking it out and declaring that God's Spirit will move and bring us into a year of activation, supernatural activation across the whole of Restore, across all of our lives, in Jesus' name. So I'm going to pray. Maybe you want to just take some time to uh, position yourself to reach out to God and let's invite God's spirit to come even from the very beginning Lord I thank you that you speak and I thank you that your word brings life and Father I thank you that this word in Ezekiel 37 is all about new life And so, Father, right now, I pray for each one of us, Lord. I pray for every member of Restore, everyone who's a part of our family. Lord, I pray as we start 2024, Lord, let seeds of faith take root again in our hearts and in our spirits. Father, if we're carrying disappointment, Lord, if our faith's been knocked over the last season, Lord, we just confess that to you. And we say, Lord God... Will you loose to us fresh faith? And Father, where you've prophesied that uh, 2024 is going to be a year of activation, Lord, we welcome the breath of your Spirit right now. Father, I join with Ezekiel and I prophesy, breath of God, blow across restore. Breath of God, blow afresh into every home, into every life, into every family, into every community, into every small group, into every gathering. Breathe of God, breath. Breathe of God, breath of God, come. Breath of God, breathe. Breath of God, come. Breath of God, fall on us, fall on us, fall on us, fall on us. And Father, as we start this week of prayer and fasting... Father, will you show us, Lord, what we need to lay down as we step into this season to be able to cooperate with you at a deeper level, to see your glory come, to see your kingdom come, to see an army raised up in your people. Lord, this week, may we touch something fresh of you. May we experience your life at a new level in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for tuning in today, and uh, I'll be back next week, and we'll continue with our journey through Ezekiel 37. Have a great week.